Tithing is a old covenant commandment which is not required now because you never read about any command to tithe in the new covenant. There's no rule of 10%. The new covenant law is 2 Corinthians 9, 7. God loves a cheerful giver, so when you give, don't give grudgingly or under compulsion. So the important thing in the old covenant was how much? 10%. In the new covenant, it is how. Not how much, but how. This is it cheerfully? And it is not of compulsion. The reason is, <clears throat> the old covenant, God was not a father. Jesus was not a husband. The old covenant, God was a master. And tithe was something like paying income tax. Compare tithing with income tax. Does your husband require income tax from you, wives? No? <clears throat> well, then God doesn't require it from you either. <clears throat> Does your father require you to pay income tax as a son? It's a master. Why, do, why does the government of any country collect income tax if it's honestly collected, honestly used? It is to pay the government workers who need to be paid. Israel was a government under God. And God said, you got to pay your income tax, which is, it was not money. If it was a farmer, he brought 10% of his grain. If it was a shepherd, he brought 10% of his flock. And it was given to the government workers, which is the Levites. Because they didn't get any other salary. They were not allowed to have no land or be shepherds or grain. How would they live? These people were giving the money, as told by their master God, it was a government, to pay the government workers. Now, today, that whole relationship is gone. God has become our father. We're not in a government. The church is not a government. It's a family where God is our father. Jesus Christ is our divine husband. And the relationship is different. There is no income tax in a family relationship. That's why tithing has been abolished. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean we don't give anything. I mean, if, if you're living in a home with your parents and your parents are not working and you boys and girls are working, would you support your home or not? I hope you do. I mean, if your father's um, earning. So I'd say, when you come to a church, a lot of people think, well, that, just means, I, that means I've got to give nothing. Well, I'll tell you, a conference like this costs a lot of money. Running a church, you've got to pay rent for a building, you've got to pay electricity, you've got to pay so many things. Where's it going to come from? From those who cheerfully recognize their responsibility. I mean, you wouldn't think of going and renting a house and not paying for the electricity bill or the water bill or the rent. I look at it exactly the same way. It's not income tax. There's no law. And if there's one child in the family who's not working, he doesn't have to give anything. But here's another child in the family who's earning a fantastic amount. He gives more for the support of the home. It's like that. So it's a family relationship. If you don't think of it as calculating uh, how much do I give, I say, are you part of a family or not? If there's a need in the family, you meet it. And there's no pressure on giving at all. And if you have a need, go and meet that need. And if you have a debt, go and clear that debt. And that's why in the New Testament church, we, in our churches, we have practiced this for 40 years in about 100 churches. No offering bags passed around anywhere in all these years. And we have proved it in the poorest communities and the richest communities in India. It works everywhere. If you seek God's kingdom first, put God's principles right. We have never till today had to pay a mortgage on a single building. Every building we planted, built a number of church buildings, always paid for fully, no zero debt in any of our churches, and um, never had to borrow money from anywhere. There's always enough in the offering box. I remember in the early days when we were meeting in my house when the expenses were zero. And we'd open the offering, offering box, there'd be two rupees in it, which is about three cents. And that's all we needed then, because there was no expense. And when the needs became hundreds of thousands of millions of rupees, God provided that too. So the principle works if you honor God. 